Blinded by pride, some would try to convince us that the devil does not exist, that he is nothing but an abstract idea. Such ideas are folly. Brothers, today more than ever, Satan is present and active in the world. In Norway, we have a saying that a beloved child will have many names. I'm not sure how beloved this movie is, but it sure has had different names over time. Its original title is Un Urlo Dalla Tenebre, which can be translated directly over to A Scream from the Darkness, according to Google Translate. Now that would be a decent enough title, but since this is trying to make money off the success of The Exorcist, it would just not be exploitive enough. So instead it got a retitle by international distributors into The Return of the Exorcist, Naked Exorcism, The Possessor, and what I know the movie as, The Exorcist 3, Cries and Shadows. Now before we go into the movie itself, let's talk a bit about Exorcist ripoff movies. William Friedkin's The Exorcist is perhaps the scariest movie of all time, and its success would of course make way for plenty of ripoffs just trying to cash in on the hype of demon possession. These films would usually not focus on a young girl being possessed, as they could also make their own movies more exploitative by adding nudity in it by having the character being possessed by a young adult instead. Some of the more known ones come of course from Italy. Beyond the Door and The Antichrist both have good parts in them and would be good choices if you can't get enough of possession movies. Then there's the weirder ones. Perhaps the most insane one is Satan from Turkey. It's basically a Turkish shot by shot remake of The Exorcist itself. There was even a black exploitation one with Abby doing quite well for itself before being pulled from theaters in America after being accused of copyright violation by Warner Brothers, who of course owns The Exorcist. And then there's the sad ones. Mario Bava's brilliant film Lisa and the Devil was against Bava's will recut and had added exploitation scenes, filmed by producer Alfredo Leone, and then the movie was re-released under the name of House of Exorcism, just to make a couple extra bucks. And there was plenty more at the time, with few making that big of a mark. The filming topic today is one of them. I can't say I've ever heard anything about this before watching this UK VHS release by HPL Video. I was expecting a bit of boring, slucky exploitation film, but I had no idea just how insane and absurd that this movie would turn out to be. I am not even sure where to begin with the story of this film. Surprisingly enough, the person that gets possessed in this one was not a female, but rather a young boy. But fear not if you are afraid that this film will lack female nudity as a demon or a succubus in this one is a naked woman messing with the young boy's mind and trying to destroy his life and everyone close to him. All of that while being naked for the entire film. His only help comes in the form of his sister, who of course just happens to be a nun. She also gets a visit from this naked demon and voila, non-exploitation and lesbian action is added to the list of fun that this film has to offer you. There is also a satanic cult being added here, with a big orgy scene of course. Now what it all means and what it's supposed to be about is just beyond me and I had no grasp or even interest in trying to figure it out. Since the movie is so insane as it is, it just doesn't matter that the story makes as little sense as it does. It feels like a mixture between different movies being spliced together. The satanic orgy scene feels like it belongs to a 70s satanic cult movie and that they just failed to finish it. So the producer just said fuck it and rather decided to film a new film and spliced in the existing footage in between the new scenes. And those scenes just feel so uneven and different from the rest. That theory could be backed up by the fact that the film had two directors. One is Angelo Panaccio, who did a handful of sleazy movies in the horror and western genre. The other one is Franco Lo Caschio, whose filmography seems to consist mostly on story-based adult features, although he also did two Eurocrime films in the 70s, with Milano Calibro 9 and Ille Boss with Henry Silva. Considering that Richard Conte, who plays the priest in the film, also had a part in Ille Boss and the fact that he feels very uh, pornish, I could assume that Lo Caschio did the exorcist part of the film, but that is purely speculation on my part. It should also be noted that the film has four screenwriters being credited for the film. Now I would love to know how four different people collaborated on this and how in the hell they ended up with this final script. Speaking of Conte, when he enters the story in the last 15 minutes, it almost goes scene for scene of trying to rip off The Exorcist, down to the way he even arrives at the house, 
obviously trying his best to mimic the legendary poster for the American film. The rest is tacky and not done very well. It's even so par compared to other Exorcist ripoffs. Sean Claude Verne plays the young boy being possessed. He looks like he came out of the 70s disco scene, with a decent sized mullet and typical boyish looks. When he's possessed any makeup, he just looks weird. Almost like they forgot there was a boy and not a girl that was being possessed there. This acting is okay, I guess. Uh, I don't really like to judge actors when I'm watching a dubbed version, like I'm doing here. Patrizia Gori plays his sister and a nun of the film. This lovely girl is no stranger to exploitation film, and has graced us with her good looks in films such as Elsa Fraulein SS, Helga She-Wolf of Spielberg, and Natalie Escape from Hell. I quite liked her in this film, as uh, well, she's obviously very good looking and cute, but she also has a natural charm to her that makes her character work, regardless of the poor English dubbing. Perhaps the best part of the film is the music by Giuliano Sorigini, who also did some work on Let Sleeping Corpses Lie and The Beast in Heat. It's not excellent, but it deserves to be used in a better production than this film. Other than that, there isn't all that much to say about The Exorcist 3 Cries and Shadows. It is a film for those who enjoy Exorcist ripoffs, and the insanity of it, with the nudity showing up every 10th minute, makes it worth watching. Although the obscurity of it makes it a fun experience, it is not a good film. And my final score for The Exorcist 3 Cries and Shadows ends up being a filthy 2 out of 5. So, fine people of YouTube, let's talk Exorcist ripoffs. Which ones do you feel are worth checking out? Have anyone out there actually seen this film? Let me know in the comment section below, and if you like reviews of weird, obscure movies, then make sure to subscribe for more reviews coming shortly. Hail Satan! I hate you! I hate you! <laughs>